Father, I thank you this morning, Abba. Father, as we are about to even get into the word, my Lord, I pray that you shall take the preeminence. And Father, that through your spirit, O oh Lord, you shall lead us from A to Z, Jehovah God Almighty, and that you shall have the dominion in everything, Abba, Father. Glory be to your name. Abba, Father, as I start in the sharing of your word, in the breaking of the bread, Jehovah, in this manner from heaven this morning, Adonai, how I pray that you, O oh Lord, you shall use my mouth, Father, you shall see through my eyes, and that through your spirit, Lord, we shall even be able to learn and understand. I commit the listeners of your word, Father, to your spirit, that they shall listen and be blessed to the glory and honor of your holy name. In the spirit that comes, my God, to steal even my father, the word that has been planted into the lives of your sons and daughters. Father, we come against such a spirit this morning. We shall not be distracted. We shall not fall out of status. My father, we shall remain in the oracles of your word and we shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Leo, I want us to share from the book of 1 Samuel, if you're there. Open with me the book of 1 Samuel from chapter verses 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verses 1. And we shall continue. Hallelujah. I can see that uh, our team, uh, my team is not yet there. But I shall go ahead and read from my, from my Bible. Praise be to God. The Bible says that there was a certain man... Glory be to God. There was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zufisite, from the hill country of... Are we going together? From the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives... One was called Hannah and the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. She had nothing. Praise be to God. Bonus if you In the opening of this uh, uh, very chapter of the book of Samuel, we can see that the Bible starts that there was a certain man. There was a certain man. Hallelujah. You see, if you look from the creation days, all the way to the book of Revelation. One thing is very, you know, very true. God has always been in the business of looking for one man. Ask your neighbor, are you the man this morning? Praise be to God. That there was a certain man in the, you know, from the, a certain man from the Ramadhaim, and the guy was a Zufisite, and his name was Elkanah. You see? Now, the Bible has opened in such a way that, you know, uh, it's becoming a little bit personal for us to understand where we are headed. You see, the book of Samuel, actually the book of First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings, all these, it could be summed as, you know, the same book. But, you know, due to, you know, due to translational reasons, from the original script of the Bible to Greek, the book was divided into first, second, first and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. But if you look at the same, you know, the book in the in the in the, the book of First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings and Second Kings, you'd find that, you know, it is almost it should be called actually one book. Only that due to the transitional reasons, it, it was divided, and the whole agenda was to explain what was going on in the land of Israel. And Judah, there was chaos. You know, there was, you know, there was ungodliness. Religious reasons were so, you know, you know, uh, forgotten. People were almost into the days of apostasy. You know, like we are running away or we are doing away with godliness. Born as if you were. You see, now the Bible has opened very clearly that there was a certain man there was a certain man. His name was Elkanah. And if you look at how the Bible has actually opened up, the, Bible, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1, 
it has come out to give us, you know, he was of this generation. He was, you know, and that generation was of this generation. You know, chronog chronologically, the Bible talks in this way, at least, you know, the Bible in the olden days, actually, or the Old Testament, was written in a way of people to be read, the scriptures to be read. And like today, I believe most of us have our own Bibles to read and even to study. But in the olden days, Bibiria ilikuwa in such a way that ilikuwa in a somwa, in the synagogues, in the, in the temples, it was to be read. And if you look at the down, you know, the downscale of how it has started, the son of, the son of, actually most chapters, most verses in the Old Testament, and like in the, in the New Testament mostly, you'd find that it starts in that manner. This way was said in, in a repetitive manner for the listeners to understand, to grasp, so that you won't forget. If you look at how this region is opening up, you know, this certain man of a certain family, you see, we could be talking of an estate, like for example, phase 13. And the people we want to address this phase 13 are in America. But how are we going to narrow it down for them to understand where phase 13 is? They're in America, they are white people. Well, what do we do? We start, there was a certain country called Kenya. There were certain cities in that country called Nairobi. There was another, you know, you know there was another sub-county near that city called Kiambu. There was another sub-county in that county called Thika. In Thika, there is a location called, we are narrowing it down to focus what we want. Now, they, st they open up and say that there was a certain man whose name was Elkana. Bonas if you were. And, and the way it is opening up, it is really bringing it out very clearly for us to understand. And the Bible continues to say that he had two wives. And one of these women, her name was Hannah. If you look at it correctly, Bibiria imeanza kutufungulia with the first wife. Her name was Hannah. The next woman, the wife of his life, was Penina. You see, actually in the olden days, even today, it is very ungodly to have a polygamous kind of a lifestyle. So already, in this very opening of the context, we can see something is about to happen in this family. That Elkanah, Elkanah has two wives. Already polygamous is happening in this family. But you see, the way, it is bringing, the way it is being brought out is in such a way that, you see, uh, the Bible starts by, this man had a wife, and the name of the first wife was Hannah. So that tells us the reason for the next wife. Her name was Penina, praise be to God. And Penina, the Bible says that she had children, and Hannah had no children, praise be to God. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh. Praise be to God. This very godly man, year after year, despite the, 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 the issue of polygamous, the issue of, you know, one of the women having no children, year after year, his fellowship, his passions for God, year after year, they never faded. Bona Sifa. Year after year, the Bible says, this man went to offer sacrifices at Shiloh. Uh -huh. Let us continue. You see, Shiloh is a place of offering sacrifices. You see, this man would travel from his home to where they would offer sacrifices because it was not just outside the door. And it was not a thing they would do every day. Bible would correctly tell us this is a situation that would happen year after year. Praise be to God. They would go to Shiloh to offer sacrifices. And when Elkanah had gone to Shiloh to offer sacrifices, he met, you know, <clears throat> year after year he went to Shiloh to offer sacrifices to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni 
and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. We both, I, I believe, we have a, we have a, we have a, we have a, a brief, maybe, you know, we have a brief knowledge, according to the scripture, of who Hophni and Phinehas were. These were sons of Eli. Eli was both a priest and a judge during those days. And he has two sons. These sons, you know, are, are, are acting as priests of the Lord at Shiloh. And this is where Elkanah has gone. Elkanah, year after year, was a man of God. He never faded. And as we go ahead and study, we will see that what happened. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to offer sacrifices, he would give portions to, of meat to his wife, Penina, and all her sons, and to his wife, Penina, and to his daughters. Uh -huh. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. Actually, I'm in verse 5. Whenever time came to offer sacrifices, he would give to Penina and her sons and daughters. But at for Hannah, the man gave a double portion. Bonus if you Because he loved her. You know? That was not all. Because he loved her and her womb was closed. So this family is actually, if you look at the book of 1 Samuel from verse 1 all the way to verse 8, it's an opening of what is going on in this family. What is going on in this family, you see? And, and, and I want us to understand, if you look at the Bible from the days of Genesis all the way to Revelation, actually you will find that, you know, one thing is very true. Abraham was married to, to Sarah. They had an issue. The family had an issue. They had no children. And after a long time, after working with God for a long time, a promise was made for Abraham that he will have a son, and the son will be Isaac. And the promise came to pass. And when Isaac was born, and he became mature, born as if he were, he married who? Who was the wife of, 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 of Isaac? The man of God married Rachel, married uh, Rebecca. And if you look at Rebecca, Rebecca herself became barren. She was without children. So this is a thing that is happening year after year. After Rebecca was, you know, was barren, later in life, God blessed her with the two sons, Jacob and Esau. When the time for them to marry came, the same problem that was happening from the days of Abraham to the father Isaac, to the son Isaac, to the father of, 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 you know, of Jacob and Esau, the same problem started. And Jacob went to his uncle. And when he was there, he saw Rachel. Rachel was also barren. And if you look at these women, even in the days of the New Testament, like the wife of, of Zechariah, you know, the mother of John the Baptist, she was also barren, Elizabeth. So this problem is happening both in the New Testament and in the New Testament, but it is all for a good reason. I don't know what is barren in our lives today. And then we are cursing and, and you know, and, and seeing as though God has forsaken us. You see, when, you know, Rachel, when uh, Sarah was barren, a godly son came out of her. When Rebecca was barren, something great was born of her. When Rachel was barren, despite the sons of Leah, the next wife of Jacob, you know, they were just mentioned. You know, Zerubbabel, Reuben, all these people. But when Rachel bore sons, too, you know, she was barren. Men and women of God, she was barren. But when she bore children, too, the first son was Joseph. We all know the story of Joseph. And how he did great and mighty things in the land of Egypt, even ruling it. We know about uh, the next son of, of Rachel who was Benjamin. You know, many blessings are said about, upon Benjamin. Unlike the sons of uh, Leah, the likes of Samuel, uh, Reuben, uh, you know, Judah. You know, what am I trying to say, people of God? In the days even of Elizabeth, many children were born in that city. 
Many women would become pregnant. But Elizabeth was not. Until when she was blessed. And her son was with a difference. Praise be to God. You know, when God comes, the Bible says that, you know, a certain man in a certain land, though he was with another woman, a second woman, Penina, God, God's intention is for the redemption of this, this country called Israel and Judah, but it's not through the seed of Penina. It is through this barren, you know, this barrenness, this, this you know, unbearing children situation. I thank God for how he operates, brothers and sisters. You know, that Elkanah loved her. You know, and her womb was closed. Praise be to God. Verse 7. Please go there quickly with me. Uh -huh. Actually, start from verse 6. Now, because the Lord loved, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival would provoke her till she wept and would not eat. Verse 6 and 7. You know, it is so, it is so unfair. Year after year, the woman was still barren. She was still faithful. She would still wait. Year after year, she waited. Year after year, her rival would accuse her. Would, would, you know, would throw words at her that would provoke her. You know, even to, the, you know, it is one thing, it is one thing to have such issues outside there with unbelievers tackling you, you know, harassing you but this woman of God, she has come at the place where she would find peace. A place where she would feel warmth. And that was not all. Her rival, Penina, would follow her year after year, provoking her even when she would go to, in, into the house of God to pray. I don't know this morning, brothers and sisters. The situations we are going through in life that deny us the, the capacity that when we come into the house of God, that when we desire God and think of God, there is something still in the back of your mind that tells you, hey, hey, why are you lifting up your hands? Praise be to God. Why are you lifting up your hands? My friend, you have issues. You have issues outside the church. This woman of God, she had come despite being barren despite being a woman of limitations of not having children, she would yearly come into the house of God. I don't know about you. Where do you go? Where do you go when you have issues? Who do you run to when you have issues? Penina, the Bible is opening up in such a way that she's already blessed. I mean, why is a faithful God who has a great destiny for Israel and Judah Allowing that this wicked woman, in the name of Penina, is walking around and about with all kind of glory and honor in the name of children. Ask around women, you know, if you look at the book of Genesis, for example, God blessed the midwives. When the Israelites, when, when, you know, when it was said that every child born of male, whenever she would be born, you know, this wicked leader of Egypt had given a, a, you know, a, 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 a judgment that a child, whether it is male in these people of Israel, whenever this child is born, kill it. Terminate the life of this child. For the fear, we don't want, you know, it was said that a Messiah shall be born. And the king in this land of Egypt this guy is afraid. This guy will come and overthrow the government of Egypt. So he gave a ruling. Any time a child, a son is born of these women, Hebrew women, kill it. And the midwives, they were God-fearing. You know? 
They never did that, for they feared God. And what does the Bible, you know, uh, record? That God, in return, for they are doing such a thing, praise be to God, he blessed them with their own families. You know, in as much as a woman is blessed with height, with glory, with honor, with materials, <laughs> ask about a woman until she has, you know, gone into labor and given birth to a son, she can see. All these things don't count. Praise be to God. She might be walking, you know, feeling and about, you know, and we fear them. They are our directors at companies. They are our bosses at our... But let me tell you one thing. Until she has gone to labor and, you know, stayed in that position of giving birth and bringing out something, not for her, for the husband. Praise be to God. You know, when you, if you look at the Bible, you would see the story of Rachel and Leah. Actually, I was laughing some, some times back. You know, Rachel, at some instances, she takes the food that was given to Leah by her sons. And they start quarreling. Praise be to God. And she tells her, Leah, please, uh, give me some food. In return, take this husband. You will be with him tonight. But give me some food. Praise be to God. Bona sifiwe. And then she says, that night, even when Rachel had, you know, when uh, Jacob had knew Rachel, she bore another son. And she says, I, I hope by this one, my husband will love me. <laughs> Imagine the pain, the nine months of carrying this pregnancy my friend, husbands, we don't know that what is. We don't. We don't carry that. At, 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 during reba. How tatuana sisi tukiswanya uchungu ile munasikianga. Women, may God help you. We don't. But this woman, she says, I hope by this son, not mine, that this husband, Jacob, now will love me. And then she gives birth to another son. Another son. Born as if he were. Hannah had been barren for so long, but it not, it was, the situation was not for her. Praise be to God. Her arrival, year after year. Hey! <laughs> that must be something. Praise be to God. I don't know about you, my friend. Year after year. And she would come faithfully and start even speaking. She would pray, the woman of God. She would kneel and pray. But at the back of her mind, a thorn in the flesh, praise be to God, a thorn in the flesh, Penina would provoke, not outside. Penina was there at the door, telling her, hey, kumbuka una watoto, <laughs> and the woman had come to pray year after year. Kai. Praise be to God. What he, let me ask you. Before you go on that flame of the door, Kaiabla wingi hapa kanisani. What peninas are you are holding you back? What peninas remind you year after year? Hey, wewe ni tasa. What, what peninas, my friends, pull us back? You know, when I come from my house all the way to the road, I'm jumping, I'm feeling happy. Oh my God, I'm going to church. But the moment I hit that frame, a penina reminds me. Praise be to God. Year after year, she never gave up. Do you know one thing? In as much as David was good, I will say this. In as much we thank God for David, let us thank God for Goliath. Let me repeat that. In as much as we thank God for David, let us thank God for Goliath. There would not be a mighty man of God in the name of David without a Goliath. 
hakungekuwa na mtu anaitwa Daudi pasingekuwa pasi na Goliath the Goliath in our lives the Peninas in our lives mhm oh my god there are times we should kneel down during prayer and pray for our Goliaths and our Peninas actually i don't have a title for this uh, service you find a title for your own situation whatever you're going through put a title there praise be to god because i might have a title for my side you know for myself according to what i'm going through what is your title this morning but i'm saying one thing she went in into the house of the lord year after year and the woman of god would not give up year after year she won't give up and penina let me tell you god is so faithful thank god for the people today we thank god for they are blessed oh they live in 10 bedrooms oh they walk, they drive big vehicles oh the salaries are big may we thank god for them but let us not be stuck there praise be to god tusikuwa mepale there are people today who've given up fellowships there are people today who've given up coming together of brothers because of oh penina has children bona persifa and i am with nothing kuna watu pale biasharani wamebarikiwa amefungua kazi jana within two days three weeks one year they have shot they have, they have, they have gone to another height but we uko tu pale we condemn we pray we lament we curse oh we backslide jehovah god we backbite car may we fall out from that may we desist praise be to god oh the barrenness in my life oh hata ukiona mimi nitasa leo kesho nitaleta i will have children praise be to god how i pray that we become men and women who walk with honor the bible says in the book of first timothy actually second timothy from verse, verse chapter 1 verse 7 that the spirit we have received glory be to god is not a spirit of fear but of power hey if you don't walk with power the only problem you have is you've not come across the holy ghost praise be to god you know if you look at the book of luke for example or even matthew you will see one thing from verses uh, actually from uh, chapter 4 verse 1 actually both of them chapter 4 verse 1 both of them chapter 4 verse 1 the bible says that jesus okay, full of the holy ghost hallelujah full of the holy ghost not full of meat <laughs> not full of titles bona persifa not full of what i own what i carry the family i come from oh my car power full of the holy ghost he was led by the devil not <laughs> bona persifa he was not alone full of the holy ghost jesus himself pastor bona sphere full of the holy ghost he was led by the devil into the wilderness the guy had what full of what power you know and because he was with power even his ministration you know he started preaching when he was 30 years our savior he did it only for how many years? Three years. Imagine, he started at 30. When he's 33, he says, it is finished. <laughs> is that finished yet in your life? Ama, we are still cursing the old devils we were cursing 10 years ago. We have no power. We have no power. Bonus if you we desire power we desire power the bible says actually that you know they were telling him the book of matthew chapter number 10 you know that if i cast out devils if i cast out demons in the name of your god belzebu he says how can a kingdom divided you know it will surely fall he says but if i cast out demons 
by the spirit of the living God. Then the kingdom of heaven has come to you. This tells me all along from the book of Genesis to Malachi to, you know, to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you know, if you look at that chronological order of events, the kingdom of God had not yet come. He says, but if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom has come. All along, even in the days of prophet Isaiah, the kingdom was anticipated it will come. There is a Messiah. Prepare ye the way. Praise be to God. They would speak of a person who would come. And when he came, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians. Hey. Even Jesus himself, he had his own Goliaths. Let me repeat. Ata Yesu Mwenyewe, he had his own Goliaths, his own Peninas, in the name of Pharisees, Sadducees, you know, they would oppose him. And only for three years, our Savior says, it is finished. Three years. If you look at it correctly, Jesus was walking with the power. Alikuwa nasema kwa power. And that is why, hata bila maneno mingi, without a lot of conviction, without a lot of, you know, I, I, how I pray I say this correctly. Without a lot of you know, issues. They followed him. They followed him. Bible says that 5,000 men without women and children. I'm sorry to say this. But if, if you look correctly. In most chapters and verses. Women and children were not so much regarded. Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians. Verse chapter number 11. That the man is the head of a woman, and the woman is thereof the glory of man. Praise be to God. Bible says that men, we are the glory of God. When he looks from up above, from heaven, he sees John. He says, I'm glad of you, son. Changamuka. We are the glory of God, men. Bonas if you I think today is, today is the day of men of purpose. We are the glory of God. I'm not saying this. It is scripture. That men are the glory of God. They should thereof not cover their heads. Praise be to God. But people have taken it so traditionally. They think it's just the cover of the head. Head. Kitua. Motue. Hapa. Siko fia. There is another cover. The cover of our heads. Let me not fall out of scripture. Because I might go and then you may forget what we are talking about. But, but, but I'm still there. Don't think I, I've fallen out of status yet. You know, her husband, Elkanah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Verses 8. Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? <laughs> it sounds good. When a woman hears this from her husband, I believe she feels good, but excuse me, excuse me, uh, what are you talking about, my husband Elkanah? That why am I weeping? I, I mean, have we not been married for this number of years? Haven't you seen? I am barren. And you are asking me, what is wrong with me? They were married for so long. But Elkanah here says, Why are you crying? Why are you downhearted? Do I not mean more to you than ten sons? You know, that is, that is the answer. The answer to the question. You started with the question, then you gave your... Someone comes along and asks you, Hey, John, what's wrong with you? You look not happy to this morning. Have you not taken breakfast? Uh -huh. That was the answer. 
But the question, you started off well. I, I'm joking. Eh? I, didn't, I don't mean that I didn't take breakfast. Actually, I took. It's only that. Tunaongea. Bona sifiwe. I'm trying to bring it home. Because we tend to think scripture, this one, is written for people that were of the olden days, not for us. When we read it today, in most times, even, you know, more oftenly, we look at the Bible as a reference book. And that is why so many people, Dada will not be out of time, Niko na masa vizuri sana. That is why most people, when we look at the word of God, we look at it as reference. Reference ni kama kiyo. Unajiangalia around and around, then you go. Then the, the mirror loses its meaning the moment you went away. Nothing, no attachment. Usha yona mtu wamejiangalia kwa kiyo, akakwama, wakakua kitu moja na kiyo. It is very impossible. Many people today, we look at the word of God. You know, it's like for other people. But no relationship, no attachment. When the Bible talks of you have been blessed with those spiritual blessings in the spiritual world, in the realms of the spirit, we don't want to understand what do you mean. Most people look at the word of God as though judgmental, you know. And judgmental is only meant for people who are judgment. Judge meant in Amanisha, you've been destined to be judged. So people, they fear. That is why we have so many occults, so many demon worships, so many, you know, denominations, uh, uh, you know, people who worship e even images and because they are falling out of the status, the word. You know, mutu anangalia neno, lina mkemea, lina mueka pahali ambapo anafaa tubu, but I don't want that. If you look at it today, many believers, we don't want that. Tunataka ile neno inaniambia, you are blessed. You go far. Oh, receive it. Jehovah is God. My friend, the Bible says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Inakata, inabind. Inakata, inarudisha. Praise be to God. But we want scripture that would only say you are blessed, you are going far. You know, this woman, she had no children. And Elkanah here is saying, why are you crying? Do I not mean more to you than ten sons? Yes, that's the answer. Yes, I don't have a son. I'm barren. I've come for prayer. I have barrenness of all kinds. Barrenness through material. Spiritual barrenness, that's a dangerous one. I'm barren. Why are you asking what's wrong with me? These cosmetic kind of questions, we have, it, we have them all over. You know? Yes, I am barren. I want to, say, to maybe think Hannah was looking at the, the guy and with a lot of humility, she zipped it. She never responded. The problem we have today, though we have our own issues in life, we don't know or even how we should handle these issues. Bible says from out of the flow of the heart. What does what? The mouth speaketh. It is true you are barren for years. Barren, sis manisha tuna watoto, but barrenness can come with all shapes and sizes. Praise be to God. You could be barren in a, a level that I'm not barren. Praise be to God. Financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness, vision. Praise be to God. You could be barren in that you don't see far. You don't have results. Year and year, you work hard, nothing. You are barren, my friend. You come to church, 10 years old, 30 years old, 30 years ago, you are still barren. We never speak in tongues. We never pray for demons and they are cast out. We are barren. There was a, you know, in the, the, book, of, in the book of Peter, Bible says that when Peter and John were at the gate called beautiful, hallelujah, there was a lame man, a lame man, a lame man at the gate called beautiful. How can you be at, be at a very beautiful place, yet you are lame? A beautiful place, a lame situation. Praise be to God. They don't walk hand in hand. 
What am I saying? We could be barren, my friends, from various situations in life. And that alone, without acknowledging it, takes us to the level of, of almost eternal barrenness. Because we don't admit, we don't accept. Hannah, she very well knew. And in this context, her husband is tackling the very situation. Am I not more than 10 sons to you? Bon appetit. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up, verse 9. Now, Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. Remember at Shiloh, we have seen sons of, of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. They are giving, they are, they are their persons receiving it. You know, in the olden days, sacrifices were brought to the priests. To the priests, you feed the man of God. You, 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 you know, you make provisions. Now they are father. Eli is at the door. Uko. The guy was old. And the sons, wicked sons, are the altar. Wako katika madhabahu. <laughs> the greatest fall away. When God is speaking about Hannah, you see, ah, God is so good, my friends. Whatever situations we are going through in life today, Jehovah God is aware about them. Bona Persifa, I don't know about you. That is my conviction. At a timely time, in the fullness of time, at the appointed time, Hannah was not barren. She was, with, she was not without children because she was cursed. Many people today, we believe when women are without children, amerogwa, amefanya dhambi. Have we taken it upon us to ask, what is the desire of God? What is God's intention for this barren woman? Tuko hapa tukikemea mapepo. Pepo ya kukua bila watoto, toka. Wake up. Let us be very men and women of scripture. Led of the spirit of God. It is not about she's cast. It is not about she's forgotten. Praise be to God. It is about God's own timing. Bona persifa. You know, El Eli, ako pale mrangoni, na watoto wake hawa naoni very wicked, ndo wanakura sacrifice katika altar. That tells you where the position of church was in those days. They were wicked days, ungodly days. Apostasy was at a heightened level. The walking away from God was too high. These people, you see the man, the old man is there, seated at the, Hannah, Hannah, I mean, and the sons, wako katika madhabahu, hata maybe wako na toothpick, wameketi kila mtu kwa kiti yake, wanaulizana, hey, by the way, uh, leo tunakula nini? <laughs> Bona sifiwe. They are not interceding. They are not praying for souls. They are not remembering people. They are busy with their own lives. And like today, we have men and, men and women of God who are concerned about us, who pray day and night. They remember our lives. These wicked sons of Eli, walikuwa pare. If you look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, they are down, actually all the way from verse 3. And actually 2 Samuel from verses 2. You will understand more of Phinehas and, 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 and you know, the brother, what we are talking about. Let me quickly, because of time, I... And she made a vow. Verse 10. In her deep anguish. Verse 10. Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, verse 10, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and do not forget your servant, but give her a son, then 
I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor will ever, will ever be used on his head. Her prayer, let me ask you, do you think Hannah was not praying? I know we have scholars. I know we have Bible teachers and all that. Do you think Hannah was not praying since she was born, since she was married, since she saw Penina with the children? Do you take it upon yourself to think she was not praying? She was praying. It was a custom, you know, it was a custom for her to come into the church, say a beautiful prayer, go home, then entertain Penina, go come again to church, go again, entertain Penina. She was praying. This woman of God was praying. But until she came and prayed again, she prayed again. Hey, she prayed again. I pray this morning that you pray again. Bona Persifa. Ombatena. If you don't get it, when you go home, you put that head of yours on the pillow. You will understand what I'm saying. She prayed. And now the prayer was genuine. It was intimate. It was personal. It was heavenly. It was intentional. It was according to the plan. The plan. The plan. Praise be to God. She was burning. And God was looking for a man. Who am I going to send? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, who will I send? It says in the book of Jeremiah, who will go for us? Hey, he's always in the business of looking for one. And this one is not the shiny one, the camouflaged one walking. No, 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 no. He uses the forsaken things. Praise be to God. The forgotten things. The cursed things of men to glorify his name. Bonapersifa, how do you feel about your life this morning? He's using you. Bonapersifa, I'm not here to preach a gospel prosperity kind of receive it. No. I mean, let us be intentional in prayer. She prayed the right way. She was there every day, speaking in tongues, touching skies. Oh, Makachaya, oh, you will bless me with a son. This son, I will have to prove to Penina that I am a woman. I can only, you know, I can also give birth. This was our prayer every day, every day. Hey, every day. Until she said, enough. This nonsense must stop. She started praying right. Oh my God, give me a son. When you give me, I shall give back. When I receive, when you give, you know, we are here praying for jobs. For them praying for miracles. What's the intention? What's the motive? Give me 10 million. Hey, they will know that. Uh -huh. And God is like, wait. Wait. No. Wait. No. Until she prayed and heaven said, uh -huh. uh, Angel Michael, Gabriel, respond. Bon appetit, until she prayed. Then heaven responded. Because during that time, Israel, Judah, were at a very chaotic time of ungodliness. You see, Eli and the sons, wako katika madhabahu, Eli ako pale, akikunyo mvinyo, anagonga wain, anarala kidogo, na watoto wako katika madhabahu, wanaulizana, eh, kamau, leo tunakura nini? Amuka acha kurara kwa madhabahu. They are not praying. There was a greatest fall away, a great apostasy of those days. And God is looking for one. One. Whatever we are going through in life, brothers and sisters, let us be very intentional in prayer. You want to show me your man of God, Pastor? No, 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 no. I've been doing that. I am tired. I am coming out of it. My God, give me so that I give you. So that I give you. Praise be to God. And let me tell you one thing. Penina was not praying. She already had. And she would not pray. That was not the intention of God. When you look at the, the, the woman called uh, Hagar. When she was married to Abraham through the, the, you know, the conviction of wretch, uh, Sarah. She, she, she was not barren. The first time they met with Abraham. She conceived. 
Pata Ishmael and there to some boy in the future. Chukua Ishmael. We need we need Muslims. So chukua uyo. Praise be to God. But the woman of God, Sarah, even at some time when angels visited her, her home and they slaughtered for them, she would laugh. She would laugh. Alizikia wakiongea katika sitting room. I want to think they were with the sitting rooms of those days. Walipokuwa Abraham anongea na angels at the sitting room, eh, they had eh, your wife. At this time, next year, she will conceive. <laughs> even she laughed. <laughs> and then they asked him, Sarah, why are you laughing? I, I didn't laugh. Praise be to God. She couldn't believe I'm 75. I am 90. I am out of, I'm expired. Are you expired this morning? <laughs> ah, he uses expiration for his own glory. Blessed be to God. Anatumia yo expiry date yako. Pastor, some women say today, oh, I am 30. I am 35. I am almost 40. Before, when I was 20, all the way to 30, I was with options. Men would wink at me. I would tell them, Holy Ghost fire. But now that I am 45, any man can do. Any man can do. Who, who is there? Who wants to marry me? Fall from that. Now, let me ask you one question. For her, Sarah, 75, she said, <laughs> forget it. At 90, hey, you are too much. Until when she was 90, something came. And the promise was fulfilled. But for Hagar, at times I say, the cheapest phones. Pole sana kwa wali wako na kabambe. Sichuki kabambe ni mzuri. Unashika network, hata ukiwa ndani ya shimo. Unashika hata ukiwa ndani ya maji. Kabambe ni simu ya maana. It's a very good phone kabambe. Murika muizi is the way to go. But let me tell you one thing. The cheapest phones. The cheapest mobile phones. Simu ya rufu moja. Na, na a mobile phone costing 20,000. They don't ring the same. Hey, <laughs> you didn't know that. Eh? If you put a mobile phone there worth 1,000 shillings, na ingine ya 20,000, the ringing tones are different. This cheap one, it has a very high ringing tone. Na hii ya elfu 20, imenyamaza tu. Praise be to God. I, I hope you can internalize that. Eh? <laughs> if you didn't see it that way, please look at it that way. Now, what am I saying? If you see me, I have a problem. I have a problem. I'm very cheap. I'm very cheap. But if you see a brother, a sister, full of the Holy Ghost, she's there walking around and in, hey, I'm very fine, thank you. By the way, I'm very cheap. Something is wrong. Praise be to God. Because if I have the Holy Ghost, I am led of God. I know scripture. I know where I'm going. Ah, my friend. I zip it. I talk less. I act more. I see more. Talking comes less. Bonus if you I hear more. I hear more. I see more. I talk less. You have two ears. You have two eyes. But one mouth. But your mouth, 1,000 shilling mouth, is speaking than two, two million ears and one trillion eyes. You see, you want to see small. You want to, to, to hear small. But you want to talk more. May we see more of God, desire more of God, hear more of God, we become more of God. Praise be to God. That way, my friends, we are people with a difference. I know time is almost expired, but I, I know maybe you are learning something. You know, as she kept praying, Dad in Namaliza in the next two minutes, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. So unfair. When I'm praying, the only thing you can see is, through, is my mouth. Hey. 
Eli saw her mouth. Verses, I'm in verse 12 actually. Observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart. That is where the secret was. And her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. You know? This woman of God, because she was praying before, now today she has desire. Now today she's praying. Now Eli, the old man at the door, and on a Tell your neighbor, don't look at my mouth. See my heart. See my heart. Don't look at my mouth. Look at my heart. Praise be to God. There are people today who want to live the life of our mouth. Lips. Lips. You know there are things we call lip service. Eco, <laughs> lip service. It is there. I'm not the one coming up with this word. It has been there. Eco, lip service. There are people who treat you at a lip service level. There are people you can talk to, you know, connect with at a heart level. I want to give you a scripture before I finish in the book of 2 Chronicles. Open with me the book of 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. At the same time, open Psalm 139, verses 4. Psalm 139, verses 4. Second Chronicles 16. For the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless. Macho yake inazunguka day and night looking at the... I don't know, not your mouth. He looks at the heart. Bible says... You know, that, you know, I'm looking at, uh, for a man in the days of David. A man after my own heart. There were other men in the, in the family, in the household of, you know, brothers of David. Jesse had other sons. But he was looking for a man after the heart. But Eli is looking for a woman at the lips. Until she told, the guy told the woman, stop drinking. This tells me, it is not written, but I am coming to think the you know, it is not normal. Pastor Meka Hapa, na naona Murevi, Murevi ya mengia kwa mlango, akistaga, it is not normal. Nae pastor na muambia, my brother unataku kawa wapi. It is not normal. Praise be to God. If you see that, you'll tell that man, or even some ushers, please, uh, can you handle this situation? Eli, speaking of a woman, you are drunk. This tells me, this was the, day, the order of the day. That drunkenness was not a, you know, a very wrong thing to do in the altar. That is why the man is attacking Hannah from the level of drunkenness. Not of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Praise be to God. The man of God says, don't drink. How long are you going to stay drunk? Verse 15. I'm finishing. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine. I was pouring. Don't mistake me. Bonas if you The woman was not taking. She was removing. I, I hope it is understood. There are people who misunderstand you when you are outpouring. They think it is an intake. The woman was outpouring to the Lord. You know, all along, I don't want to continue from there because time is much gone. So that I finish, I welcome pastor. But, you know, that alone tells us the opening of that scripture, even where we have reached this morning, 
brings into our understanding. As I am keeping on saying, the greatest fall away of man from the presence of God, like in the days of, of you know, of, of uh, you know, this man called, uh, what is the name of this guy who killed his brother Abel? Cain. When Cain, the Bible says, he walked away from the presence of God. Another apostasy started from there. Now here, Eli and the sons are bringing about another apostasy in the devil of, oh, godliness is so forgotten in this place. What are you talking about? Don't drink again. You see? And God's intention is for this one man to bring deliverance, to bring redemption, to bring his people back to himself. Sifa. Praise be to God. Now, I want you to read Psalm 139, verses 4. Yes, that one, very good. For there is not a word in my tongue, still uttered. But behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Praise be to God. Before I pray, Hannah knew this secret very well. That even before she had, you know, it is good to pray loudly. It is good also to pray in the silent. It depends with the level of what you are going through. But before a word comes out of the mouth, Jehovah God knows it already. Praise be to God. Now, you know, as we have started that, I said I will not give you a title. Give yourselves a title according to what you are going through in life. But one thing, a footnote, I will give you and say that cheap mobile phones, they ring the loudest. Praise be to God. May God bless you. Let us.